Hi guys, I'm Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems and today I'm going to be showing you how to paint out a lightsaber. So we have this footage that was given to us by Michael Simpson. He was working on a fan Star Wars film. It's really awesome. And what we're going to be doing is we're going to be painting out this lightsaber so that we can add a new lightsaber in. So I'm going to show you the breakdown of that paintwork. Now you can see this poses a couple of challenges. It's not a straightforward remove. One of the reasons it's not a straightforward remove is that there's a couple of different planes of parallax happening. And we need to account for that. The other thing is we've got actually a foreground shadow on these rocks, and I'll show you how to get rid of that as well. The first thing we need to do is we need to get rid of this blanking. We go to our clip tab, and we just crop our yellow line. This doesn't actually crop the footage. All it does is tell Mocha not to look at these black bars because Mocha is a machine. Mocha believes what you tell it, and if you tell it that this black bar is part of the footage, it will try to track it. So we're just going to go over to the track tab, and you can see that it's visually hidden. Now we need to do a couple of things. We need to define the objects that we want to remove. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to track our lightsaber. So let's find a good parallel frame. Take our x-spline, because our x-spline is where we're telling the track to look, and we're going to draw a spline right around our track. Now this is telling Mocha to look at this spline and track all of the pixels within it. It's going to track the pattern of pixels. Now you can see I'm not really very, very tight on my edges. I actually am not tight on my edges for a reason. Mocha uses the edges to calculate the track better. We're going to track translation, scale, rotation, and shear. I don't really need perspective because this is turning too much in perspective, and I don't want Mocha to get hung up on that. And also, I don't need the perspective data. So we're just going to go ahead and hit track backwards. And you can see that Mocha slipped just a little bit as it rotated too much, so we're going to fix that. What we're going to do is we're going to increase our angle track to about 20%, and Mocha will take a little longer to track that, but it should hang on better. Do you see it does a better job of tracking because we increased the angle. Now I'm still going to correct my roto just a little bit. And another reason I want to stay outside of the lines is I want to make sure that we account for any motion blur when we remove. If we leave any of that lightsaber on the background, Mocha doesn't know that that's not part of the background, so it will actually try to use that information when it replaces those pixels. Let's go ahead and hit track forward, and we're just going to do some simple correction right here as well on our roto. Now I'm going to show you another trick. We're going to hit our auto pan tool, right? Activate quick stabilize mode. What it does is it that just locks our shape into the middle of the screen so that we can tell if our object is going outside of our roto a lot easier. All right, so far so good. Everything is contained within that shape. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to track my foreground girl and I'm going to hold her out because I don't want her information to be left on the background and have Mocha be confused that those pixels are part of the background. So we're going to call this lightsaber. We're going to lock it, turn the gear off, and we're going to visually hide it for a minute. And then we're going to go ahead and draw a garbage mat. Let's do it right around both our people. So just like this, we're going to draw a garbage mat around our people. And let's hit track backwards. And Mocha should do a decent job of garbage matting them out automatically for me. Perfect. Let's correct some of our roto. I want to make sure that we're only leaving the handle and getting rid of the rest of our lightsaber. Perfect. So now they're fully contained. And we're going to move back into the screen. So we're going to call this FG People. We're going to lock it and turn the gear off as well. And we're going to hide that because we don't need it. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at the layers of parallax that are happening in this shot. Let's turn our auto stabilize off. So I have a couple of different planes here. I've got my foreground rocks, I've got my midground rock, I've got my background hill. So we're going to need three different levels of tracking. Now first we're going to track the foreground rocks, because you always want to track in Mocha from the foreground to the background, and here's why. When you track from the foreground to the background, you're always going to have these as holdouts. Now in this shot, I want you to notice there's a lot of shadows that move over these rocks, so I don't want to track the shadow area because Mocha will interpret that as movement, so I'm going to track just the back of these rocks right quick. So let's just pull this shape out. We're going to track translation scale rotation. We're going to track, track this forward, and we're going to track this backwards. And we'll end up with a very nice solve. So now I can come in here and I can actually turn my Uber key on. I want you to see something neat. At any time, I can use my Uber key, and I can use my add points to splines, and I can actually rebuild my shape really easily. 
The reason this is important is because I'm actually not able to track this whole shape and get a good track at the beginning of this shot, so I have to use my Uber key to offset all of my shape data. Now, you could also just link to track, like make a new layer entirely and go down to link to track and link this to a foreground track, but in removes, we actually want to make as few shapes as possible because every shape you add to a remove file actually increases the render time of a remove because the remove has to look at each layer and each new layer is an exponential increase of the amount of time you're going to spend on your remove. So we're going to call this FG rocks and if I've done everything correctly this should move really nicely. Now I can see there's a little bit of a correction I'm going to have to make. No problem. We're going to come over here we're going to turn uber key off and auto key on and we're just going to scooch this over. Scooch being a very technical term, removing something a couple of pixels. All right, now what we're going to do is we're going to track our background rocks. Now, our background rocks will actually be really easy to track because we've actually already added all of our holdout mats. So if we turn these visually on, you can see none of this will be looked at when we track this background rock. So now I'm going to draw a shape around my midground rock, around my background rock, and I'm going to draw a big shape around our background plane, including the sky and the ground, because there's not enough variation in the sky to worry about. So we're going to call this BG, and we're going to drag it to the bottom of the layer pile, because Mocha tracks everything from the foreground to the background, which means it holds out the foreground layers at the top of the layer pile from everything beneath it. So we need to make sure our layer order is correct. So we're going to call this BG Rock. And we're going to call this MG Rock for midground, so midground and background. Layer order is really important, and so layer naming is really important so that you know what's happening. So from here, we're going to track all three of these at the same time. We're going to do translation, scale, rotation, and shear. Um, translation, scale, rotation, and shear. And we're going to do translation, scale, rotation, shear, and perspective because they're they're actually moving in perspective here in this background. So let's go ahead and hit track forward. If we want, we can turn our surface tool on and see what the track is actually doing and the grid as well because the shape will actually lie to you. The shape you can animate, so the shape will never tell you exactly what the track is doing. But if you turn the grid and surface tool on, the surface tool can't help but follow the track because it's a child of the track. And the grid has to follow the surface tool, so you want to make sure that you track those all at the same time. So if I select all of my tracks, I can see that my background track for my background rock is actually not doing very well, but my midground and foreground tracks are doing pretty well. Like, in fact, let's take our background surface tool and let's align it to our ground plane. And you can see that's moving correctly. If we take our surface tool in the front, you can see that's tracking correctly. But if you look here at our midground rock, you can see that it's warping too much. So what we're going to do is we're going to retract this with just translation, rotation, and scale. And that's only because we don't actually have a lot of pixels to track here. So as we start to lose more pixels to track, what we can do is we can actually move to just translation only and see if that gives us better results. And that's how you troubleshoot tracks that would otherwise give you a lot of problems. Let's go ahead and make sure our Uber key is on and we're going to soften some of the curves of that rock. And let's lock these and hide them. So now I have my lightsaber and I want to get rid of my lightsaber. What we're going to do is we're going to turn our locked gear off and turn our gear on and we're going to jump over to the remove tab. Inside of the remove tab, I want to explain a few things. So, the things that are important is my FG rocks, my foreground rocks, are in the foreground above my lightsaber, and that's important because we need to hold them out for when we do our remove. Our midground rocks and our background rocks and our background are all part of the background that Mocha's pulling from to replace this lightsaber. And I'm going to turn my overlays on here for a second, and I want you to notice that all of these background shapes are always moving behind our lightsaber. 
That's important because if these were over here somewhere, Mocha would not be using this shape to replace this shape. So Mocha uses all of this background to replace this background. Now all we should have to do is go ahead and hit render and Mocha should replace our lightsaber for us automatically by using all of the pixels that move behind the lightsaber. And so it's replaced it. So now from here we can just hit render backwards and see what Mocha gets us. That lightsaber is gone. So now I want to remove this shadow on the rocks. And unfortunately, this is already a pretty roto heavy shot, so that means that it'll take a long time to render if I add another layer of remove. So what I'm going to do is simplify this so that I can remove this really quickly. What we're going to do is we're going to delete every shape in here except for our foreground rocks. Just like that. Now we're simply going to roto our shadow. We're going to zoom in. I'm going to select my X spline. I'm going to draw a nice shape right around my shadow. From here, we're just going to hand roto this. I'm going to call this shadow. And because this is a shadow on a rock, this texture is going to trip Mocha up a little bit. So it's not going to track very well. It's just easier to hand roto it. For hand roto, I just take my X spline and then move the keyframes manually. Because it's Mocha, it automatically keyframes my shape, and I just move through my timeline and manipulate my X spline around the shadow as it progresses forward. Now, I'm just going to drag the shape off screen. I'm going to look for where the shadow comes back on. And then once the shadow comes back on, I'm just going to hand trace it and keyframe it right around the same shadow area. It's really just that easy and it's just a very quick process. All right, so that's pretty straightforward. So now we only have two layers of remove. So we're gonna click on our shadow, and you notice it's above FG rocks because the foreground rocks are actually the background for our shadow. We're gonna to jump to our remove tab, and we're gonna tell Mocha to look inside of this shape and replace all of the information inside of this shape with all of the data inside of our background shapes. So let's just go ahead and hit render backwards. Turn our overlays off. All right, so now we have our foreground render. And I should probably clean out my cache because it looks like my cached lightsaber has also been removed in the same pass. But we're gonna rebuild this in passes inside of After Effects. Now what I like to do is I like to combine my passes inside of After Effects for a final pass with matching grain. And I'll show you how to do that. Let's go to our Mocha file and let's go to our track. So instead of Mocha, let's select foreground rocks, go to export shape data, Mocha shape data for After Effects, selected layer, copy that to the clipboard. Inside of After Effects, I'm gonna go to edit, paste Mocha mask, and that will limit my shape to there. And we can do like a negative two mass expansion with like a two pixel feather, and that tends to solve any sort of evils that we would have had in our shot, like from edges. All right, so now let's isolate this remove area over our lightsaber. So let's go back to our Mocha and let's go to select our lightsaber. Let's do export shape data, Mocha shape data for After Effects, selected layer, copy that to the clipboard. We make sure we're on our first frame inside of After Effects and that we're selected on our lightsaber remove. We go to edit, edit, paste Mocha mask. From here, we can just add the nice roto for our lightsaber back in. So let's go into our original file. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn all of these off and I'm going to go to my original and I'm gonna create a nice roto shape right around my lightsaber end, just like this. And I'm going to link this to lightsaber. Let's go ahead and extend this. And let's call this Lightsaber Roto. And let's just quickly clean up some Roto on our lightsaber. And this again is where the Auto Stabilize Auto Pan tool comes in handy. What we really care about is the edge. And we just wanna make sure that this shape is a nice, clean, consistently moving shape because we're gonna put a lightsaber blade behind it and this is gonna be stacked on top. So now let's go ahead and save that. Let's go to export shape data, copy it to the clipboard. 
Inside of After Effects, we're going to duplicate our original movie. And we're going to go to Edit, Paste Mocha Mask. And that will give us our lightsaber end back on our lightsaber. Now we can go ahead and add her lightsaber. We're going to jump back over to Mocha and we're going to use Roto to rebuild this lightsaber blade. So we're going to use our original lightsaber shape here and we can duplicate this. We can call this lightsaber beam Roto. And what we'll do is we'll use our Uber key. We will soften this and we will make a hard edge here at the bottom by pulling our points to here. And then we're just going to correct our roto throughout the shot and make sure that it aligns perfectly with this lightsaber blade. Because it's just roto, we don't need to add a track for a translation, scale rotation, shear, and perspective or anything like that. So we've got this nice roto. Let's turn our thumbnails off. Hit save, go to export shape data, and we're going to do mocha shape data for After Effects. We're going to select our layer. We're going to go ahead and uh, copy this to the clipboard. Inside of After Effects, we're going to take our original footage and our remove, and right in between our foreground remove and our lightsaber remove, we're going to go to layer, new, solid. Let's create like a Jedi green solid. Hit edit. Paste smoke a mask, and let's go ahead and soften that edge, feather, to 5, and let's duplicate this, and let's go to our layer solid settings, and let's do like a white center, and let's make like a negative 3 expansion, and now she has a lightsaber in our shot, and that's really all there is to it. If you have any questions, I'm Mary Poplin with Imagineer Systems. Please visit us at www.imagineersystems.com for more information.